Hello, my front end friends. I want to show you something really cool because if you look at this layout that I have here, uh, this is in Figma, and you can see I have this like overflowy grid thing that's going on here where you'd sort of side scroll to get to the, not sort of, you would side scroll to get to the different elements. And if I come and look uh, at larger screen sizes, that overflow grid goes away. But I have an issue that the layout of the cards change as well, only over here. And I could make like two different types of components, but I have these preview cards that I'm using throughout this site as a component and I don't want to have to have like alternate versions of it necessarily you know different components that are almost the same that's kind of annoying and if you've ever had this situation where it'd be cool to be able to like toggle a class but within certain breakpoints or something but of course we can't really do that except we can do that now with modern CSS so let me show you uh, what I have here so right now this is at large screen sizes, the bottom section is fine, but up here the top one is kind of broken because I'm using a container query and it, it's making me get the side scrolling action here where I don't actually want it. And if we open up responsive mode here, at one point this does actually break and it goes underneath and then here we get it there, which is what I want. And then this other one down here, which is what I want for that one. Uh, but it's at these larger screen sizes where I need this to stack the problem is because I'm using a container query, the area for it's small, so it's staying the way it was. So uh, let's see how we can fix this. And so let's jump over to the code to see how I can fix this, where here I have this article preview component that I talked about. Uh, and I have this overflow article grid here, which is just using that preview component to put multiple ones in there effectively. And I have that article overflow grid here, and I have that same one coming there. And we're gonna start by looking at that because let's go and take a look here. I have it set up where I have this container query going on. So that's saying if the width is greater than 768 pixels, we come in and do the overflow grid effectively. Uh, but I also have set this up here where I have columns looking at columns true and then if my columns are true we do this and that might look kind of weird but this is where the magic is happening here so if I say columns like this with the underscore on there on purpose and this is from Leia Veru it's, it's this idea of like private properties sort of as a custom property and so I'm saying columns with the underscore here is looking for a columns now I don't have a columns defined anywhere like this without the underscore. So because it can't find this, it's evaluating to true, which is the fallback value. So this is just saying that by default, we want columns. And if the columns are true, which is the default, we get that overflow grid behavior that we were getting up until now, which means I can turn this off anywhere I want by just changing the value of a columns like this anywhere. So that's super useful to me because <laughs> if I come here and I come take a look, when my media query hits and I go to two columns, I want those elements to stack instead of going next to one another. So what I'm gonna do here is let's get that specific thing. Cause I think it, it, I could do this generally on the parent, but I'm just gonna take this entire selector where we're only getting the ones that are going to be down the side there. And so if I take those ones uh, within this media query, so we can grab that selector. Of course, we want a dot in front of that. Uh, and then I can say here that my columns are now false. Uh, and any value here would make it false effectively, but it's easiest if you use true or false. So by doing that, if we come and take a look, now they stack, perfect, kind of. Not really the layout that we wanted. If we go back to Figma, as a reminder, when we're at this layout, I actually want things to go next to one another and not stack one on top of each other. We can use the same trick again. So what I've done this time is, if we come and take a look in my code, let's jump on over to the actual article preview component itself, which is nothing too fancy. There's some stuff going on here, um, but we just have an article basically, and then I'm styling it. So I have a very normal layout that's coming through at the beginning here. And then I have a container query here, which is a style query again, saying article preview layout, alternate layout is true. So there, if it finds an alternate layout that's true, it's going to go into this version of the layout instead. In this case, I didn't set one of those fallbacks at the top saying false, just because I didn't really think there was a purpose to doing that. We're not turning off a behavior, I'm adding complexity by turning on something. So I took a bit of a different approach. But now what I can do is come in here in this same area, we can just come in, I copied it so we can paste that and write false. Uh, or no, I want it true. I was going to alternate, but we do want it true. So we want columns to be false and we want the alternate layout to be true. And now let's go back to our layout and look at that. We have our alternate layout coming in. And then when we shrink down, we hit that breakpoint. 
where these go over to stacking this way and then this falls back to this way and the container query kicks in so we get the side scrolling action coming in and because we hit that breakpoint the alternate layout has been turned off so i'm effectively toggling some css styles through a media query just by turning on and off custom properties in a way. It's super cool, super powerful, and it's something that I'm really excited to start using more of. I do want to caveat that as of the time of recording this, browser support for style queries is not fantastic. It is in two of the three engines right now, but I'd encourage you to check the link in the description for an up-to-date browser support table because as of my time of recording, it's potentially very different from when you're watching this video. Now with style queries, there are a few things to know. Right now, they only work if you're looking at the values of custom properties, so we can't do them with other things. The spec does say that we should be able to do like color red and that should work. Right now that will not work. So if you look into it, you think that's possible. It will be eventually. That's why it's partial support right now for everything. Uh, but if you do it for custom properties, it does work. And I think it's actually the most useful way to do it, even though I think the other one will be kind of cool once that's an option too. And the other thing is if you're looking at all of this and you're wondering to learn more about everything that I'm doing here, uh, where you can see like there's variables coming in and there's whether it's the astro components and other things like that or the variables and anything else like that. This is all part of the final project of my course Beyond CSS. As the name implies, the course is all about going beyond the basics of CSS. It's once you're comfortable with it and you're looking for an advanced course that gets into things like design systems and theming, we are using SAS for it. But then as the course progresses, we look at how we can bring in a lot of what we're learning into more modern workflows where I'm using Astro with scope styling, component-based layouts. And then we're actually all hooking that up to Tina CMS, which is a headless CMS, so we can have a client-ready project to hand off. If you'd like to learn more about the course, you have two different options, actually. There's a link below where you can go and enroll in it right now. Or if you'd prefer to see more about what's covered in the course, I looked at a lot of the different things, including like the starter templates that we're creating, how I'm starting new projects with it, and a lot of the other parts of like the actual CSS side and generating styles and everything that I cover in the course. I talked about that in this video that is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, I would like to thank my enablers of awesome, Andrew, Philip, Simon, and Tim, as well as all of my patrons and channel members, as well as you for watching this video. Thank you very much. I hope that you enroll in Beyond CSS and whether you do or not, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.